welcome to the Big Monday presented by Boost Mobile. Greetings from Prairie View, Texas. The William Nick Center where tonight it'll be the Prairie View A&M Panthers playing host to the Jackson State Tigers in this SWAC matchup. Prairie View, the conference leader, Jackson State tied for third. Robert Ford with former NBA GM Lance Blanks and Devontae Patterson, preseason SWAC player of the year. Big key for this Prairie View team. Boy, yeah, Robert, they don't get much better than this in this conference. Devontae can do it at both ends of the floor. He's a little bit of an energizer bunny, and he brings that skill set in terms of his ability to score all over the floor. He doesn't shoot the ball particularly well from beyond the arc, but he does just about everything that anybody would want coaching-wise on other either side of the floor. Fourth in the conference in scoring, averaging just over 14 points per game. Also third in the conference in field goal shooting. Leading scorer in the league, Tristan Jarrett, who is on Jackson State. We're ready to get going here at Prairie View. Home team Panthers will control to start off and an issue with the clock early on. And you, mentioned, straighten that out. you mentioned Tristan Jared for Jackson State. It'll really be a, a lot about those two guys. Jared for Jackson State as well as Patterson. Jared really scores the ball. Jackson State, they love his aggression and his ability to score. He can score in bunches. Doesn't use a lot of discretion, but he can score with just about anyone in the country. Foul on jumpers, no good for Gerard Andrews. Second leading scorer, on, or one of the leading scorers on this Prairie View team. Jackson State on offense for the first time. Owen Griffin up top. Fakes the jumper, now looking to get rid of it with 10 on the shot clock. Left-handed runner is in and out for Jones, or for Jonas James, and here comes Prairie View. Take a look at the starters for Prairie View. Chancellor Ellis has been a big key of late into the starting lineup as Devontae Patterson with the first basket of the game. Well, and that, that first basket shows the arsenal and the ability, stronger than he looks, takes the hit, fills the push, and then shoots the little runner. Doesn't shoot the ball particularly well, again, from beyond the arc, but he can work really well inside of the three-point line. Meanwhile, for Jackson State, Javius McKinnis, only player who has started every single game for the Tigers. They've had to mix and match quite a bit, as has Prairie View, as far as the starting lineups have gone this year for these two clubs. Panthers with the 2-0 lead. Driving inside, and the layup is good. Benji well Wallace with the first basket. Yeah, no one on the interior had a straight line drive, pretty much coming off of that screen. Look at this interior open up. Patterson stayed connected and did not help. That is Wayne Brent, the seventh year head coach for Jackson State. Very successful high school coach in Jackson, Mississippi, winning six state titles in 13 seasons as a high school coach before taking over the reins with Jackson State. The key's got to be the bow tie, I think. Oh, yeah. He, he, he dresses with the best of them. Very dapper. Talk to him today, and he's just about keeping things simple here. Wants to try to control pace because he knows Prairie View can get going pretty quickly. Try to get going there with the Chancellor Ellis jumper, but it was in and out. Tigers with the one-point lead. Roland Griffin, transfer from Iowa. Face a double team, decided to get rid of it. On the baseline to McKinnis. Open three from the left wing, and that is drilled by Wallace. He has all six points for Jackson State. Yeah, that's a nice look for Wallace, but we talked about Jarrett. They try to run everything Jackson State through Roland Griffin because he's somewhat of their regulator from an offensive perspective. Antoine Lister with the first three of the night for Prairie View. And now some backcourt pressure put on by the Tigers after that made basket. Lister 
Had a lot of space and caught that in rhythm. A big time, good looking shot. Textbook from beyond the arc. Tristan Jarrett trying to probe the defense. That shot misses the mark. And the rebound pulled down by Steve. Andrews left side and able to drill it. First basket for Gerard Andrews, 6'5", senior out of Lafayette, Louisiana. Boy, it, it, talk about focus. He has a little bit of a bad finger there. Unable to get himself right in position mid-range. Knocked that shot down. Pretty impressive. Andrews knocks the ball away as they try to get it into Griffin. But the Tigers able to recover. Seven to shoot and a foul call. It's going to be on Prairie View. They're going to get Andrews for the hold. Well, a little bit overzealous there. He tried to tie that up from behind the offensive player. He'll get that call every time. Jackson stayed with the ball, down by a point. Martin falls, or Griffin rather, falls down trying to work in the post. And call for the travel. <laughs> Credit Patterson with the defense there, and that's an example of his full arsenal. Not only but defensively, he's extremely solid. Just talking to him. All the different ways you can use him on either end of the floor. Very few breaks of Jackson State pressure. Getting the ball into the front court. To Sneed on the left wing, eight to shoot. Sneed kicks it into the right corner, open three, and that is knocked down by Chancellor Ellis. First basket for the senior out of Queens, New York. Well, Ellis is your three point shooter, had a nice showing NCAA tournament, NCAA tournament last year. Very good shooter, and he's one of the guys that Prairie relies on to spread the floor. Jumper is off the front run for Griffin. 8 0 run for the Panthers, leading by four. Quickly up the floor, Andrews with the right hander. And he's got four. Well, right now, Prairie View dictating pace. They want to play fast. You'll see them junk things up defensively. A lot of switching, some trapping. They really keep offense out of kilter with all the different defenses that they throw at you. You look at their numbers defensively in the SWAC, one of the best, if not the best defensive team in the conference. Trying to drive baseline here with four to shoot, but that layup is missed by Vantelius Ross into the game. Ross got going a little quicker than you'd like. He had an easy layup, almost as if he panicked when he got to the basket. And Patterson throws that one into the first row. Well, Andrews, in spite of the finger, just does a nice turnaround. Panthers up six early. <laughs> Well, Jackson State jumped out to a 6-2 lead in this ball game, but it's a 10-0 run for Prairie View. And right now, the Panthers with the lead. Robert Ford with former NBA general manager Lance Blanks. And right now, Prairie View really dictating the pace of what they're, what they're known for. Well, yeah, and they dictated through pushing the ball offensively and getting up and down. Jackson State wants to prevent that. They want to play a little slower pace unless they have an opportunity to push the ball. But right now, Prairie View is winning that battle with a full arsenal of guys that can score the ball and have a green light to do so. And that man there has just done a fantastic job of building this program and establishing essentially a winning culture, getting them in the turn tournament as recently as last year and will make a strong push to do so again this year. Strong push there, but the layup missing the mark from Kanan McClellan into the game for the first time. Another turnover, though. Jackson State with the basketball. And the foul drawn on the baseline. Tristan Jarrett 
will have a couple of free throws coming his way. Yeah, and anytime Jarrett catches the ball, you have to guard him as if he's going to score because that's what he does. He, he gets buckets up at a pretty high clip, and he, he's one of those unique players in that he's he's not really bothered or he doesn't let off the gas or govern himself, if you will, in spite of his shooting percentage. For example, this young man has taken 154 threes made only 44 at about 28 percent now that's not a slap i mean but it's a skill to continue to shoot and be aggressive in spite of a lower shooting percentage leads the swack averaging 17.8 points per game and jared picks up his first two of this ball game that ends a 10 nothing run for prairie view and gets the tigers to within four First point since the 18-10 mark for Jackson State. Williams trying to drive inside. Instead, the foul line jumper is knocked in. As Andrews now with six. Top of the key, three, and that's off the front rim, but an offensive rebound on the miss by Jonas James. Three try from the left wings, no good for McClellan. And here come the Panthers. Williams will slow things down. Fate Williams into the game for the first time. Along the baseline for Andrews, Williams gets it back, goes to the bucket. And the Panthers able to get the offensive rebound. You know, the Panthers have to find bodies when the ball goes up and finish off defensive possessions. One of the keys is the latter part of the possession. And another offensive rebound there, a put back for Andrews, who now has eight, and it's an eight-point lead for Prairie View. Yeah, and Andrews is no slouch. We talked about him this morning, or I'm sorry, this afternoon with Coach Smith. He is a key component to this offense. You've got to keep a body on him as well because he can score just about any place on the floor. Jonas James able to hit the layup. First basket for the six-foot junior out of Jackson, Mississippi. And it's 16 to 10 in favor of the Panthers. Wallace gets rid of it on the right side for Williams, who will try a three. And the rebound snaps down by Roland Griffin. And whenever Jared has the ball, even here, you've got to get in him and try to force him to give it up. He'll probe and probe. Look for offense. James taking his time here, comes around the screen. Griffin gets stripped, and it's out of bounds to Prairie View. Able to force a turnover there. When you talk about buy-in, Robert, that's something that Coach Smith has really gotten these Prairie View Panthers to do is buy into the concept of obviously scoring the ball, but getting it done on the defensive end. That's where he wants their bread to be buttered. You see it here early, how aggressively they play on that end of the floor. Darius Williams driving to the basket. Two bodies there. One of them whistled for the foul. Nice hesitation move. They have so many offensive players, the Panthers do, that you have to respect them. Can't over help or they'll make you pay. Six foot senior out of Augusta, Georgia, Darius Williams. Averages just under 12 a game. For the most part, has come off the bench. Has only started two games this year for Prairie View. Patterson will take a seat. One more coming up here. And that one rattles in for Williams. You see here, they see them changing things up. Now they're in an all-out press. Again, forcing Jackson State to speed things up. 14-4 run for Prairie View. Eight-point lead. Jackson State looking to cut into that, and they do with the baseline jumper from James. He has four. Oh, a nice job of the lefty turning back. 
over the left shoulder. That was a high degree of difficulty with that shot. And Williams kicks it into the right corner, opens three. That misses the mark. Taken by Dwayne Cox into the game for the first time for the Panthers. Game slowing things down here. Under. Jackson State traditionally known as a team that likes to slow things down. Under. Keep the scoreboard in the 50s or 60s typically. Although they've played at a bit of a faster pace this year than they have in years past. Turnaround shot from the post is no good for McKinnis. The Panthers come away with the basketball. Yep. Jackson State can't ask for a much better look than that. Has a little bit of a size advantage, just unable to finish it. Really had trouble buying anything offensively, getting anything to fall. Jackson State. Seven to shoot. Darius Williams along the baseline, and that's a travel. Wayne Cox moving his feet. 18 to 12 lead for Prairie View, trying to stay atop the SWAC. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Boost Mobile. Step up with Boost Mobile and get a super reliable, super fast network. And in part, by Jeep, there's only one. And Snickers, the world's a better place when satisfied. Welcome back to Prairie View A&M, where the home team Panthers have the six-point lead. And Gerard Andrews, a big reason for that. Well, it's a luxury when your second best player is your highest scorer, that being Andrews. He takes so much pressure off Patterson, as does Patterson off of him, because he can score in a myriad of places. Also, you don't have to have both guys on the court at the same time. Coach Smith is just a credit to his ability to recruit. The type of guys that he's brought in here that can get so much done on the floor. Andrews third in the SWAC, averaging 14.7 points per game. Patterson right behind him at fourth, averaging 14.4. And I mean, they challenged Texas earlier this season, or even without Patterson being with the team. Patterson missing the first eight games of the season. Prairie View puts on some pressure. Jackson State able to break it. Open three from the right wing is off the heel. That was taken by Lewis. Kenneth Lewis into the game for Jackson State. And it's going to stay with the Tigers here. There's plenty of time on the shot clock as James will slow things down here. Yeah, and this is where Coach Brent wants him to play through that young man there. And only play fast when you have to. You had a late clock. The point guard's got to get him a shot. Not able to get it off, but does get fouled as James will head to the line. James plays this to perfection. He recognized the clock, beat the defense, and any time you're guarded that closely, Especially as a point guard, you've got to be able to break people down, which is exactly what he did with the late clock situation. Able to convert on the first free throw. James in his first year with the Tigers out of Pearl River Community College in Mississippi. He's from Jackson, Mississippi. Six foot guard. He's got one more free throw coming his way. Able to get that one to rattle in. Five point lead for Prairie View with the basketball. Patterson back in the game. Foul line jumper after the pump fake, and Patterson able to get that one in. His second basket of the night. And that's Sneed's fifth assist. Credit Sneed, though. He's so unselfish as a point guard. It's really. Puts these guys in the right position to score the ball. Trying to 
get it inside. Triple team there on Griffin. And the foul will be called on Prairie View. Well, it looks simple, but Sneed creates a little spacing, gets it to their main man or one of their main men right there in the middle of the floor. You've got to crowd him. You let him measure the basket. He'll have a field day all day long. McClellan unable to get the ball inbounded, so he calls a timeout to avoid the five-second count. 20 to 13, Prairie View on top by seven. Welcome back to the William Nick Center. They call it the Baby Dome, a 23-game home win streak for Prairie View. And they're up by seven here with just under nine and a half remaining in the opening half. Roland Griffin, double team, gets it back along the left side, unable to hit the three with the shot clock at five, and an offensive rebound for the Tigers. So they get to reset. Corner pass, three-point try, that rims out. Simpted by Kenneth Lewis, and then a foul on the Tigers. Well, Lewis played that extremely well, getting to the corner. Whenever you have a driver go along the baseline, you want to drift to the corner, which is what he did. You can't ask for a much better shot than that against a very pesky Prairie View Panther defense. Foul on Kenan McClellan, giving the ball back to the Panthers here. Miscommunication there, Sneed and Patterson not able to connect, but fortunate for Prairie View, it was last touch by Jackson State before going out of bounds. Yeah, and that was turned over because Patterson came up as if he was going to catch the ball, but was looking away. Didn't realize the pass was made to him. Ellis left wing, able to drill it. Man, when he gets his feet set, he is lethal, Chancellor Ellis. Yeah, he, as I said, he did it last year in the the tournament also did it against the University of Texas. Coach Smith described him perfectly. He said he looks he looks like somebody might be your uncle. He couldn't do much <laughs> with his body, but he's a baller. And he, he really is. He can shoot with the best of them. You've got to make him put the ball on the floor, or he'll make you pay from beyond the arc. Driving inside. Now a kick out to the right corner. Open three is no good for Vinci Wallace. Jackson State trying to get the offensive rebound, and it is out of bounds. It will stay with the Tigers. Boy, that's... Ooh, they might have got away with one. Looked like his foot landed down on the court before yeah, he was able to get that off his leg. He's wondering that, too. Dontelius Ross throwing that off of Devontae Patterson. Keep possession for Jackson State. State works the ball around the perimeter here. Into the post, double team. Wallace goes to the basket. And he'll have a couple of free throws when we come back. Well, Ellis, you got to guard him, the 36% three-point shooter, knocking shots down here for the Panthers. This is our next Super Tuesday doubleheader on ESPN and the ESPN app. Purdue, Wisconsin, in a Big Ten battle of teams trying to stay off the bubble at 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Then Coach Cal and the number 12 Wildcats square off against number 25 LSU at the Maravich Center in Baton Rouge in a big matchup between two of the top teams in the SEC. That was quite the battle last year with LSU picking up the two-point win over Kentucky. Although the Wildcats have won six of the last eight meetings between those two teams. Ten point lead here for the Panthers. As Prairie View used a 12 nothing run early in this half to take a lead that they haven't relinquished since. Jackson State with a chance to get back within single digits on free throws here. Vinji Wallace at the line for the second time tonight. Yeah, I think the big difference thus far has been the Jackson State has been playing at a little bit faster pace than they would want to at times. 
Now, I talked to coach today about that. He wants to control the pace and be opportunistic when there are chances to get quick, good looks. But to play fast for the sake of it is just not something that Jackson State does or wants to do. They've got to be able to knock down shots when they get open looks. Speaking of knockdown shots, that's what Chancellor Ellis has been able to do tonight. His third three-pointer, he's got nine. Yeah, he's just one of those guys, Ellis, is that you have to identify at all times when you're on defense. You cannot let him get lo loose and have clean looks. Swinging the ball around the perimeter. Now a baseline jumper, that's bricked off the back rim by Wallace. And see, that wasn't a bad shot by Wallace. So again, they're just not falling. they just got to stay aggressive and confident in spite of missing shots. An offensive foul is the call there as Antoine Lister driving to the bucket. But he'll be whistled for his second. Great help side defense. You saw Lister almost come from out of bounds. Jonas James, the one who was able to draw that charge. 13-point lead, the largest of the night for Prairie View. Under seven to play in the first half, just inside the arc. And that's a brick from Tristan Jarrett. He's still looking for his first field goal make, the leading scorer in the conference. So with his ability to score, look for him to continue to chase shots. Guys that score, that's what they want to do, score. He's not going to be shy about getting more shots up. Patterson fouled on the drive attempt by McKinnis. Here will stay Prairie View basketball here. Chancellor Ellis after a, a quick Respite will come back into the ball game. He hands the ball off the inbound now to Sneed. Sneed trying to drive inside. Instead, out to Patterson, top of the key. McKinnis pulls down the board. Nine rebounds per game is what McKinnis averages. That leads the swag. It's a plus anytime you can get Patterson to shoot. From beyond the arc, he's only made five on the season, a 20% three-point shooter. And you almost don't have to go guard him. You should space him anytime he catches the ball beyond the arc. Second foul on Darius Williams, and that is the 18th foul on the Panthers. So the Tigers shooting the one and one here. With Tristan Jarrett, both of his points tonight have come from the free throw line. 69% shooter from the line this season. And this, these can be critical for guys who haven't scored field goals in the game or struggling early in games because what it does is it allows players to see the ball go through the net. And a lot of times it's, it's very psychological for scores. And the free throw line is, is the perfect place to get some confidence and rhythm. Sneed spinning inside and able to hit the layup. Nice move by Leon Sneed for his first basket. 6-2 senior out of DeSoto, Texas. Well, I just love these point guards' discretion, namely Sneed for Prairie View. They share the ball and also can't not guard them because they're aggressive and attack when they need to. Nice Panthers, go ahead. Panthers attack quickly after the Lister missed three. And Ellis will drill another, his fourth three of the game. He's got a dozen of lead all scores and a timeout called by Jackson State. Well, Ellis does a lot of what his coach used to do, <laughs> Coach Smith, which is shoot from beyond the arc. But there, you're not going to pressure me. Okay, then I'll just take it straight to the hole and finish. And that's really what? pretty move. So Jackson State, is it a matter of them right now just trying to, to slow things down and, and play at a pace they're more comfortable at? Well, yeah, and at, at some level, though, they're going to have to start looking at the score and create possession. So they may be forced just by the score, more so than Prairie View, to play a little faster than they want to. You know, when you're down 16 points, that's a pretty challenging deficit considering how good this 
Panther team is. Especially in this building. 23 straight home wins. Last home loss for Prairie View came January of 2018. And a travel called on Jackson State as they commit the turnover, Roland Griffin. Yeah, something coaches hate, and they love playing through Griffin. Looked like they cleared the entire side for him. I mean, at, at the very least, you want to get a good look. Not getting a shot up, that can certainly be deflating for any ball club. Patterson, baseline, yes, and the foul. Devontae Patterson starting to heat up. And that looked like a little bit like an NBA play because he never dribbled the ball. Great hockey pass and then the pass to Devontae. Looked like he knew when he caught that he was going to go into his shooting motion. He was able to take the bump and finish. Griffin whistled for that foul. Just the fifth on the Tigers here in the first half. Patterson, 72% from the line, and he completes the three-point play. 19-point lead for Prairie View. Jackson State looking for some answers. You see, they make it so hard for you, that Prairie View, with their trapping and pressing and pressuring. Look at that, three guys around the ball. Smith wasn't kidding. I mean, look at this suffocating defense. You know, when, when defense is this aggressive and you're on the offensive side, sometimes it feels like there are more than five people on the floor. You know. One other thing that Byron Smith told us for review head coach earlier today about their defense. He says, yeah, we play good defense. Sometimes maybe foul a bit too much. They're among the nation's leaders in terms of how many fouls they commit, and we've seen it here. They, uh, they're one more foul away from the double bonus. Second free throw goes for McKinnis. What that tells me is that they're aggressive, and you know the next level to that skill set is trying to be aggressive without the fouls. And I'm sure Coach Smith will take the type of aggression that they get. He talked about it today with his defense. It's about. What do you say? Will not skill. Right. Which we're seeing a, a great exhibition of that thus far in this game. Lister unable to hit the triple. And a foul on the rebound. That's on Patterson. Coming over the back of McKinnis. It's two on Patterson. And well, that, two free throws coming up in the double bonus. That's one way to slow things down. Just keep going to the line. Jackson State, 69% from the line on the season. McKinnis hasn't exactly helped those percentages. 49% free throw shooter, although he's able to hit the first. The NBA players have a few more days off for the All-Star break. Then the playoff push starts, and these teams are in the thick of it. Our Friday night doubleheader starts in OKC. Nikola Jokic and the Nuggets taking on Chris Paul in the Thunder, 8 Eastern, 7 Central. And then Zion and the Pelicans in the Rose City for a battle with the Blazers. Coverage starts with NBA countdown at 7 Eastern and on ESPN and the ESPN app. Yeah, but when it comes to rebounding, McKinnis is the guy on the floor. And you know, if I'm Jackson State, I'm okay with shots going up because this young man, I mean, you see it, he gets almost every rebound. The ball's at its apex, so there's no one on the floor, statistically, anecdotally, or otherwise, who can rebound better than this young man. James driving inside and able to get the bounce. Seven for Jonas James. And you saw the graphic there with Jackson State only shooting 22 percent on the floor. They, they've got to get better shots. They're getting decent enough shots, but they're able to make them. They can get some layoffs. That percentage will go up pretty quickly. Ten to shoot. Ellis will try another three, and of course he drills it. Five of six from deep. Chancellor Ellis with 15. Well, Jackson State is refusing to make the adjustment, so Prairie is going to, and Ellis are going to continue to make him pay. The adjustment is to guard him before he catches the ball. James tries to answer. He cannot. Tigers are just one of eight from three-point range. Got to stop the ball. Sneed gets all the way to the baseline. 
Now Ellis open again, can't hit that one, but an offensive rebound for Andrews who will slow it down. It has been Chancellor Ellis show so far for Prairie View. Six on the shot clock. Falling down there as Andrews loses it. Jackson State back the other way. Griffin reverse land hits and the foul. Boy, did Jackson State need something like that. Well, we talked about layups making that percentage go up. The nice pass by Ross. But Ellis, he's on fire. Wow. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Try a big bacon classic today. The 16 point lead for the Panthers of Prairie View A&M. And a big reason for that has been the hot shooting of Chancellor Ellis, five of seven from the field, five of six from three. Boy, he is on fire and Coach Smith talked about him today and how much he loves him. You cannot look at this young man and make any presumptions or assumptions because he can really light it up, especially from beyond the arc. And he's had that on full display here in this first half of basketball, Robert. It's been quite fun to watch it unfold. And Chancellor Ellis, senior out of Queens, New York, played at New Mexico State, also played a year at a junior college in New Mexico before finding his way to Prairie View. Averaged five points a game as a junior last year. He's got that up to seven this year. That average is going to go up with his 15 so far tonight. Yeah, and you're just looking at him, you can look at his face right now. He He's in that basically zone that people talk about where kind of nothing exists but you in the basket. Griffin completes the three-point play to get Jackson State to within 15. And Ross is, he's going to have to stay on him or when they switch, you cannot give him space. Jackson State making a nice adjustment. Williams driving inside, unable to hit. Battle for the loose ball, and it's out of bounds to the Tigers. As Vinji Wells, Wallace is a little shaken up, gets to his feet, appears to be okay. Now one of the keys beyond scoring the ball right now for Jackson State is stopping the momentum of Prairie View. You know, with 2.32 left in the half, you do not want them to go into the locker room with the kind of momentum that they've had for most of this half. Two and a half to play in the first half. Tigers looking to, to score the basketball. That's been an issue so far tonight, shooting just 29%. Put the ball in the corner now to McClellan back into the game. Eight to shoot. Thought about the three. And he'll try to three from the corner, but that's off the front rim from James. Offensive rebound. The putback's no good for Ross. And then a fight for the rebound. It's going to be a jump ball. Possession arrow keeps it with the Tigers. I thought Ross had a chance to go finish. He looked like he tried to get that foul from Andrus versus going ahead and just trying to get the ball up over him. Griffin. Fade away, got it. Rolling Griffin now with five. And the Prairie View lead is trimmed to 13. Bynum into the game for the first time. Tamir Bynum for Prairie View, number five. Very nice patient here by the Panthers. Three to shoot, Steed loses the basketball. 
And here comes Jackson State going all the way and finishing is James. He leads the Tigers with nine. And a timeout is called immediately by Byron Smith. Great changing defense to offense. If no one stops you as a point guard, you have to do just that. Take it right to the middle. The high, di high difficulty here, not using the basket, the backboard to score the basket, just laying it right up over the front of the rim. That is not an easy shot. And most 11, coaches teach you to take it all the way to the backboard. 11-3 run for a Jackson State. The Tigers trying to finish off the first half on a positive note. Just over a minute remaining in the half. Sneed from the right elbow, unable to convert, and the rebound snatched down by Dantelius Ross for the Tigers. Well, the defense is going under the screen. Sneed knows it, wanted to challenge him a little bit and take that look. Into the post now for McKinnis. Righty hook shot, and he gets the roll. And just like that, the Tigers have gotten it to within single digits. I think down there, Jackson State is a little bit stronger. They can go to that and get some buckets. Andrews just inside the arc, unable to convert. And here comes Jackson State. Griffin, double team, put it off the glass and in. Roland Griffin makes it a seven-point game. Wow, what a great job. Jackson State has all but stopped the momentum and created their own. And Patterson called for the offensive foul. And that is three on Devontae Patterson. Ross the one drawing it. Just great help side defense. Stepping in. I mean, that little fella there, unafraid. Patterson coming right at you. Yeah, Dontelius Ross gives up about 10 inches. <laughs> yeah, no, some, some poundage as well. <laughs> Half coming to an end and a foul on the three-point shot. That'll drive a coach nuts. Yeah, and, and Preview has done just about everything wrong here that, that you could do. You saw it with the Patterson drive where there was no driving lane. And then, of course, the contest. You're not going to get away with that. Dwayne Cox, the one guilty there. Is James at the line. Looking to get into double figures, and he's not able to do so with that first one. 2.8 remaining in the first half. At one point, it was a 19-point lead for Prairie View. to get the second one to rattle in. 79% free throw shooter. And Jackson State, they know how good this team is, but they've had their own little mini run of their own of late. They went into five out of six, and they lost to a very good Texas Southern team a couple of nights ago. Half-court heave at the buzzer is no good for Darius Williams and a strong finish to the first half for Jackson State getting it to within five at the half 37 32 in favor of Prairie View after the break join us for a studio update and we'll have first half highlights and analysis from the Baby Dome in Prairie View. Welcome back to Prairie View. Panthers with the five-point lead at the intermission. And uh, this was all Prairie View early on as they had a 19-point lead with 5.15 remaining in the first half. But Jackson State with a strong finish to the first half, a 13-0 run to end the half, held Prairie View scoreless for nearly the final four minutes. Yeah, it's almost like a scoring baton. Roberts being yeah. passed around. It started with Andrus, of course, for Prairie View. He got them going, and then it was passed from there to Ellis. But this young man controlled things from inside the arc, and then they decided to pass the baton to Ellis. 
who opened the floor up and was knocking down trades. They were raining. When you thought Jackson State was left for dead, this young man, James, poured it on at the end of the half, helping close the gap to five points and turning this thing back into a real game, not allowing Jackson State to go away. Prairie View with the five-point lead. Top team in the conference trying to stay undefeated at home. They've won 23 in a row here. Welcome to Big Monday presented by Boost Mobile. It's been a battle between Jackson State and Prairie View. The Tigers started off five from 23 from the field, finished off five for five. As we take a look at some of the individual scoring numbers as well, Chancellor Ellis, five of six from deep. He's really been the story land for Prairie View so far, but Jackson State able to get back into this basketball game. Well, yeah, two other stories I want to earmark. One was on the graphic before, the 18 points in the paint by Jackson State versus six by Prayer View. And then also, let us not forget, Jarrett is still without a field goal. I don't expect that to be the case. Leading score in the swag. Going forward in the second half, sorry. Yeah. Tristan Jarrett, all four of his points have been from the line. Andrews will try one from the elbow. That misses everything. Here come the Tigers. 357 mark of the first half was the last time that Prairie View scored a point. Jackson State ended the first half on a 13-0 run. Wallace, nothing doing there, so he'll kick it out. Nine to shoot. Open three right wing. Dontelius Ross unable to convert. One of ten from three are the Tigers. That pass inside taken away and then turned back the other way to Prairie View. Really not a huge opportunity there anyway. No need to make that pass. Looking for our first points of the second half, about a minute in. Steed around the screen. Lister, he'll try a triple. Jackson State able to corral it thanks to McKinnis, the leading rebounder in the sweat. Slowing things down here. Now trying to drive inside. Nothing happening with that spin move. Dontelius Ross didn't start the game, but started in the second half. Just inside the arc now. The jumper is knocked in by Vinji Wallace. He's got eight. And it's a three-point game. See that? They could have gotten that shot in the first half, and they did. Those were being missed. That just adds a new dimension if Wallace is going to be able to help knock down mid-range jump shots such as the one you just saw there. Mid-range jumper for Andrews, unable to finish. Patterson flying in, couldn't get the putback. And the Tigers come up with the basketball. Well, I love McKinnis on the boards. He's just a man-child down there. Griffin loses it, but Wallace able to get it. Well, two-man game there. Wallace had his shot rejected, and it's out of bounds. It will stay with Jackson State. Well, I thought he should have attacked the rim there. There was no reason to necessarily avoid the contact. I mean, Wallace was in perfect position. Sometimes force guys to make great plays versus being hesitant. Not only that, you had McKinnis on the backside to clean anything missed up. Now Henry, who only played five minutes in the first half, back into the game for Prairie View. Kanan McClellan's in once again for Jackson State. 12 on the shot clock. Jackson State could tie it from three, but those buckets have not been plentiful from deep tonight. They'll try one here and then short off the front run for Griffin. And the rebound's pulled down by the Panthers. There are only three teams in Division I basketball who shoot the three at a worse percentage than Jackson State does. 
And a one for 11 from deep tonight. That ball's knocked away, and then a foul called on prayer review. As bodies go tumbling. Nice hands there by McKinnis. And then how about the effort? I mean, no one can get mad or angry about that effort from either ball club. Bodies on the floor, which is what coaches love. And one thing to keep an eye on. A lot of fouls in the first half for Prairie View. That's three now in Antoine Lister. Devontae Patterson also has three for the Panthers. Worth watching here in the second half. That ball's knocked out of the hands of McKinnis on his way up. Well, McKinnis, he's not a guy that really has to gather. You certainly don't want to bring that ball down to waist level or below. You're around the basket. Make him pay. Put that ball on your chest and then just go straight up. Three point lead for Prairie View. Ten to shoot for the Tigers. James, he gets that one rejected, but a foul is called. Nope, it's an offensive foul that's going to be called on Jackson State. Well, so James, James called for the charge. James is so good when he gets going downhill. And contrarily, Prairie View is so great with their help defense. As you saw, Cox comes in. That's one of the things Coach Smith was talking about today with Cox. He's just such a good defender and a hard-nosed, tough ball player. Lister handling on the right side, working his way in. Tough shot, misses everything. And here come the Tigers. That's Inside, good. and that's pretty to Griffin. Nine points for him. Well, whenever help comes or your man goes to help, go to the basket. You got willing passers on the floor for Jackson State, and guys will share the ball, particularly James. One-point game now. Patterson driving baseline off the glass and in. And no, it's going to be... An offensive foul on Patterson, and the bigger story there is that is four on Devontae Patterson. Nice pump fake, and then help defense. He's in place. You've got to come down with two feet, plant, and just go straight up. Patterson now will come out of the game with those four fouls. Jackson State can take the lead here. They haven't led since it was six to two. Trying to get the ball inside now to Griffin. Righty hook shot misses everything. An offensive rebound and putback is no good for McKinnis. And some backward pressure briefly for Jackson State. Yeah, I thought Griffin shooting a little fade away jump hook wasn't necessary. He had the size advantage. And a turnover for Prairie View there. Sneed shuffling the feet. Fourth turnover of the half for Prairie View, which has its lead trimmed to one. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Try a big bacon classic today. And cheap. There's only one. And there's only one point separating these two teams right now. Prairie View with a 37-36 lead over Jackson State. And Jackson State has really seized the momentum since the latter part of the first half. We take a look at the SWAC standings. And Jackson State, one of five teams tied for third in the conference. And really, in this one big, big league, all these one big leagues like the SWAC, Lance, it's all about this time of year, that positioning for the conference tournament to determine who's going to get to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, and you see it in the effort. And the first step is finishing at the top of this league, which is Pre what Prairie View is trying to do. You know, if Prairie View obviously finishes out, they get the number one seed in the conference tournament. And at this level, Robert, what it comes down to, and we talked to Coach Smith about this today, it really comes down to three days in the season. Could you? You're really only going to get one team into the tournament and maybe even playing in those first games, the play-in game. So they know how critical it is to be at the top and 
Texas Southern is on their heels. Coach Johnny Jones, who's picked up right where Coach Davis has left off. They're right on the hills of Prairie View, and, and their rival, they're only probably about 45 minutes away, right in the middle of Houston. Fade Williams misses the three. Prairie View, first time in school history. Last year, they won both the regular season and conference tournament titles in the SWAC. James won at the three, doesn't or one at the foul on the three, it doesn't get it. Uh, he might have had a, a ac an accurate gripe there. Thought he did get bumped. Prairie View losing to Fairley Dickinson in the first four last year in the NCAA tournament after winning the SWAC with 17 and one in the SWAC during the regular season. And off to a nine and two start in the league this year. Griffin working his way inside, just flung one up. He thought he was fouled, doesn't get the call. He might have, but he was out of control, and typically a official's not going to bail you out. Boy, did they need that. Lister with the big three to make it a four-point game for Prairie View. Yeah, and I think Jackson State of late has been about self-inflicted wounds. First you have the turnover, and then not picking up a three-point shooter. Always got to have, especially against Prairie View, some kind of floor balance defensively. Martin against a or Griffin against a double team, and that doesn't go well for him. Here come the Panthers with a little more bounce in their step. As the foul is called, Williams fouled before the shot. Jackson State is so much better offensively when they let the offense come to them naturally. Williams does a great job of finding the trailer here, Lister. It steps right into the three. First field goal for Prairie View, that three by Lister since the 357 mark of the first half. As Keith Kimball official going over to the scorer's table here. Technical foul's been assessed. Roland Griffin called for the technical, probably still upset about not getting the call on the offensive end. Well, and that's a perfect illustration of what I mean about self-inflicted wounds there. He, he's upset, but Griffin, it, it's easy to say for me sitting over here on the side, but it is critical for Roland has got to maintain his poise. He's a critical element to this team. You're down one point. He just went off the rails, not only with his game, but just with his emotion, which has allowed Prairie View to extend the lead back to five. Prairie View, or Jackson State, rather, the fourth different college for Griffin. Left Illinois State, had some issues there, was there for one year, then to a junior college, Midland Junior College, then got to Iona. New York got kicked off the team after having an altercation with an assistant coach. Now a foul called here on Jackson State. Yeah, and I don't know the details of Griffin's challenges in terms of what happened with the altercation or before that, but a lot of times it's about directing that emotion into the right place versus, uh, versus allowing it to implode on you. I mean, and that to me is as, as much of a skill as anything. The ability to be disciplined and control your mental approach. Lister, that three rims out. Wow, what a rebound. Again is grabbing it, and then a blocking foul is called. Two free throws coming up for Linnell Henry. Or a bigger part for Vinci Wallace going aggressively to the basket. Watch where he gets this rebound. McKinnis just, I mean, he just snatches that thing right out of the air and throws ahead. Boy, that's some next-level rebounding and outlet passing. Chancellor Ellis called for his third foul, so three of the five starters for Prairie View now with three or more fouls, including Devontae Patterson, who's currently on the bench with four. And if this game stays close, that certainly could factor in down the stretch. And a lot of what we're seeing coming to fruition, we talked to Coach Smith. He, they, had, they had their way the first time they played against this team, but he said this is a different team. We're seeing that now. 
This is our next Super Tuesday doubleheader on ESPN and the ESPN app. Purdue, Wisconsin, Big Ten battle of teams trying to stay off the bubble, 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Then number 12 Wildcats against number 25 LSU at the Maravich Center in Baton Rouge. And that's what's coming up on our next Super Tuesday doubleheader. Empty trip there for Wallace. So still a five-point lead for Prairie View. 23-game home win streak here at what they call the Baby Dome in Prairie View, Texas. Seven on the shot clock. Panthers trying to make something happen. And that jumper comes up short for Andrews and out of bounds to the Tigers. Well, you talk about the Baby Dome. I walked around this campus today, and what a beautiful, just a, a great environment. It really is. I mean, they have the... Athletic administration building across the street, and it, it's just very nice with weight facility and computer rooms for the students. And I mean, just a, a phenomenal environment for an education and, and a, to play sport. I mean, they really love this place. I didn't see a blade of grass out of place. There's a lot of pride here on this campus. It's 45 minutes northwest of Houston. Three-pointer, and that is short for James. One for 13 from three, Jackson State. Andrews inside, and he's able to get it to go. And credit Williams early. Didn't look like it, but impressing the pace and getting the ball up the floor quickly, and then guys running allowed that easy basket by Andrews. Prairie View looking more like the team we saw for most of the first half. And now get a turnover. Andrews back the other way. The foul and the bucket. And Prairie View feeling really good right now. Well, the momentum has shifted. And Prairie View is the recipient of the mo. Andrews running. Wow. Check the standings. This game is huge. Lace up your boots because the race is on. Ain't no one taking me on my zone. I like to keep heading up. If you ain't worthy, I'll take you through. Energy! Oh! Oh, for goodness, man. Well, that certainly should be a fun one, Kentucky and LSU. It's been a fun one here at Prairie View. As you see, Byron Smith, head coach for the Panthers, pretty emphatic in his huddle there. Oh yeah, this guy has got a lot of fire in him. I mean, he's got a lead, but you can see the intensity and how important all of these games, and particularly this in this moment, he's trying to capture the moment with his team. And there's a little bit of fire and ice on either, on either side of the floor. <laughs> That's ice. There's Wayne Brent, yeah. head coach for Jackson State. One free throw here for Andrews, looking to complete the three-point play, and he's able to do just that. 13 for Andrews. Byron Smith, former guard at the University of Houston in the late 80s, early 90s. He's one of the one of the few people who still remembers playing against Lance Blanks and <laughs> others. Well, I tell you what, Byron, he is a class act, and you know you. I just had the most fun that I've had in a long time in a shoot around. And he sat and he told a story after story. He had us laughing. At one point, we asked him, you know, what, what do you want out of this? And he just, he said, I want mom to be proud of me. And I can tell you, Miss Blackshire, you've done a great job with this young man here. <laughs> I know for some, he's not considered young, but he, I was just so impressed by the way he carries himself, conducts himself, and what it's all about for him in terms of what he's put together here at Prayer of a and m Watching from Bossier City, Louisiana, where Byron Smith is from originally. 
came to this area originally to play for the University of Houston and has more or less been in this area ever since. Yeah, I mean, it, I, it's not something you would expect, but he was dead serious. He said, I just want my mom to be proud. And uh, uh, you should be very proud. He's, he is uh, truly, truly a class act. And he's, his, his one-liners are some of the best I've heard. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Ten-point lead for Prairie View. Nine to shoot for the Tigers. James working his way inside, and he's got two free throws coming his way. Well, I like that James got that call because he hadn't gotten a favorable whistle of late. And I think he more than anyone has been one of the keys in terms of keeping this Jackson State team where they are. He has such a great feel for when to be aggressive and when not to be aggressive in terms of keeping teammates involved in the offense. His 11th double figure game of the season. Looking for his 13th point with this upcoming free throw. Making his eighth straight start for the Tigers. And James able to get Jackson State to within eight. 10-22 remaining in the ball game. Dave Williams just inside the arc, and he's able to drill it. First basket for the 6'2 sophomore from Dickinson, Texas. Oh, and that's huge for Williams. He's not very aggressive when it comes to looking to score. James went under the screen. He made him pay. Right wing three-pointer, and that rims out for Jackson State. Dontelius Ross unable to connect. Nice pass. Now Andrews unable to get that one to go. But the offensive rebound for Williams gets another offensive rebound. Lister, his feet are set, and he drills it. Wow. Third three of the game for Lister. Well, one of the best times to get a three or take a three is right after an offensive rebound. But how about Williams in his impact on this game? He's rebounding the ball, finding people, defending. And that'll be a basket and a foul. Javius McKinnis headed to the line looking for his seventh point of the game. Well, I think if Jackson State can exercise a little bit of patience, they can chip away and get back in this game because they are very strong around the rim in part because of that young man there, McKinnis. And so strong with incredible hops. By the way, that foul on Chancellor Ellis, his fourth. Devontae Patterson on the bench with four fouls. Antoine Lister with three for Prairie View. Those are three of their starters. Williams just inside the arc. Well, yeah, that's because the defense is literally playing that far off of him, trying to force a shot by Williams. And another offensive rebound for Prairie View, getting another opportunity here up by 11. Three from the right wing, Lister with a hand in his face. And McKinnis picks up another rebound. Into the post now, Griffin being aggressive. And Williams comes away with it for Prairie View. Got to stop the ball. And Lister called for the travel. That was probably a break for Jackson State. Well, yeah, because they had numbers and people open. So it's back to the Tigers here. As Ellis will take a seat. Dwayne Cox into the game for Prairie View. Number 11, he's on the ball guarding Ross. Now, Kane McClellan inside and the flush for McKinnis. Nice pass. That's exactly what you do when you catch the ball in the middle of the floor, particularly your, the basket's to your back. You turn and face. You found the right guy. <laughs> so McKinnis really knows how to finish with those legs that he has on him. Prairie View calls a timeout as Jackson State gets it back to within single digits.
Sports Center tonight after Iowa State at number three Kansas with Kenny Main and Michael Eves. We'll have an interview with Joel Embiid. Plus, Wayne Wade talks retirement and family with our Rachel Nichols. And Pro's Race Reaction for the Daytona 500 Sports Center after Big 12 Hoops on ESPN and the ESPN app. Nine point game here at the Baby Dome at Prairie View. Well, Jackson State, they've missed their last 13 three pointers. They're going to have to figure out how to get the ball inside. They're not a great three point shooting team. And the man you just saw on the exercise bike, Devontae Patterson from Prairie View, one of their leading scorers on the bench with foul trouble. So even more of an opportunity for Jackson State as they get the rebound here off the missed shot. Elias Ross slowing things down. And they've, Jackson State has to identify mismatches, particularly around the basket. There's one right there in terms of size. Griffin called for the offensive foul. Third foul on Griffin. Patience. Patience. Take your part. Fourth Patience. foul. Patience. You got a smaller guy on you. Just take your time. Take your time. And you can see. He's good job of controlling his emotions. You can see he's seething there. Got a technical earlier. I mean, when you got a smaller guy is on you, that's literally all he can do because, because he's smaller that close to the basket. Don't get caught stuck in that trap. Andrews cut off on the baseline. Eight to shoot. Patterson back into the ball game and unable to hit the shot, but Devontae Patterson's going to the free throw line. McKinnis called for his third foul. It's a nine point lead for Prairie View. A couple of free throws coming up for Patterson when we return. Prairie View leading this game and leading the SWAC with a 9-2 record in the conference. Take a look at their upcoming schedule as they're on the road for their next couple at Arkansas Pine Bluff in Mississippi Valley. As you see the banners there for regular season and tournament championships last year for Prairie View under Byron Smith. First time in school history they've taken both. Second time they've gone to the NCAA tournament. They also won the SWAC tournament back in 1998, so it had been a while before last year. Well, how about that? You like your coach dancing after the timeout. That's <laughs> loose. <laughs> By the way, a technical foul was called on Antelius Ross of Jackson State right before that timeout. That's why Andrews is at the line for a couple. Patterson will now get a couple of free throws as he was fouled in the act of shooting. So a couple of technicals on Jackson State tonight. And Rolling Griffin got one earlier. And they're still within striking distance. Yep. Also within striking distance, they really haven't gotten much from Tristan Jarrett, leading scorer in the SWAC. He has just four points, hasn't connected on the field goal. It's Patterson just did get back into the game with the four fouls. Now he'll take a seat. He's got nine. And it's a 13-point lead for Prairie View, which led by as much as 19 in the first half. Jackson State breaks some mild pressure. Number seven remaining. And the ball's taken away. Lenny Howard had that stolen. And here come the Panthers. Yeah, one of the keys for Lemmy is just being solid. Not a whole lot of offensive production there, and they know that. You just got to be solid. Solid means taking care of the ball. And a foul underneath. A little too aggressive trying to get the steal, Vinji Wallace. And that's the first on him. Well, and Jackson State is losing the whistle game right now in terms of technical fouls and 50 50 balls. They're ending up with fouls. Double bonus 
after that last foul by Jackson State. So a couple here for Andrews. Leads all scorers tonight, looking for his 17th point, third in the conference, 79% from the line. And he's able to can both. Take a look at the foul trouble on both sides. Patterson's minutes have been limited in the second half. Picked up that fourth foul early in the half. And Griffin with four for Jackson State is flying in with the layup. Jonas James, he's been a sight for sore eyes more often than not for Jackson State tonight. Well, yeah, anytime he gets the ball going downhill, he is as dangerous as anyone in this gymnasium. They know that any comeback is going to have to involve James. He's so quick, it's almost impossible to stay in front of him. And he also throws you off a little bit as a little bit of a, a lefty, not a little bit of a lefty, as a lefty, especially as Jarrett remains on the bench, ice cold. Jarrett with his warm-up on. Makes you wonder if he's going to come back into the game. Dontelius Ross started the second half instead of Jarrett. Not sure if there's something else going on there. There's a nice steal from McKinnis, and he gets fouled on his way to the basket. Excellent play by McKinnis trying to breathe some life into this Tigers comeback attempt. Oh, he did all the work there. Not only the tip, tips it to himself. Oh, that would have been an ugly finish. You can almost guarantee yourself that. But a nice recovery by Williams, not giving up the easy basket, especially to a player who does not shoot very well from the free throw line. Yeah, under 49%. The preseason SWAC Defensive Player of the Year. And he's unable to make either of those. Still a 13-point bulge for Prairie View. Jackson State with some three-quarter court pressure. But the Panthers able to break it. But then they throw it away on the skip pass intended for Lister. Patterson a bit high with that one. Patterson is much better going towards the basket, looking for himself as the first option in terms of scoring. I don't like him as much as a, as a facilitator. So, Tigers with the basketball down by 13. Under six to play. Fairview does such a good job defensively of switching things up. I mean, it's like a pitcher who throws off-ball pitches. Nice baseline drive by Wallace. Ten points for the senior out of Huma, Louisiana. Transfer from the University of New Orleans. 11-point lead for Prairie View. And now the Panthers... Running some clock here. Kate Williams holding the basketball. Now they'll go into their offense. Patterson will try his three. And a foul on the rebound on Jackson State. He'll get Wallace for his second. Well, it's like all, almost every whistle. And this is not a slap at any referee. It just seems like Jackson State isn't putting themselves in the best position when there are opportunities to get this lead under 10. Dwayne Cox at the line. Byron Smith really likes what he gives his club defensively. Not known much as a scorer. Averages under two points per game. And has a chance to beat that if he's able to hit on the second. Yeah, and it, his defense is so good. Sometimes he forgets plays. <laughs> I mean, that's a guy that I mean, he, you lock, you really can lock in sometimes where it affects other parts of your game. And the one thing that Coach Smith has done is it seems like he's got just about every base covered in terms of types of players for this ball club. Off the glass and in for Jonas James. Team high 17 for the Tigers. And it's an 11-point game, a kick ball. It'll stay with Prairie View, Jackson State ratcheting up the defensive pressure trying to come back into this game. Well, Cox fell asleep and assumed 
And James would go off the screen, and as soon as he cheated a little bit towards the screen, there's James going downhill where he's so good. Andrews unable to hit. And here come the Tigers Great on pass. the break. Wallace gets fouled. I hope we get to see that pass again by James. That was just a beautiful bounce pass. Watch him just put this right on the money. I mean, perfect in stride. It's a little nuanced, but what a beautiful pass. How's that for leading the offensive player? Absolutely. You, you want to you receive a pass where you don't have to break stride. And that's it, just what Wallace got to do. This is the first free throw. By the way, that last foul was on Lister. That's four on him. So that's now three starters for Prairie View with four fouls. One more coming up for Wallace. He's got 11, his sixth double-figure game of the season. And it's a 10-point lead for the Panthers of Prairie View A&M. Once again, some pressure for Jackson State. Williams slowing things down here. Just over four minutes remaining. Now seven on the shot clock. Patterson working in the post. The turnaround doesn't go. And the rebound's pulled down by Wallace of Jackson State. Three left wing, and that's off the back rim from James. One of 15 from three is Jackson State, and then a foul on the ensuing putback, Khalil Spencer, the one who was hacked. And Patterson in some pain right now. That's not a good sign at all. Patterson holding that right leg. Ten-point lead for Prairie View. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Boost Mobile. Step up with Boost Mobile and get a super reliable, super fast network, and in part, by one a day. Ten-point advantage for Prairie View with 3.53 remaining in the ball game. Devontae Patterson came off the floor after this on the last play. Yeah, he stepped right there in the middle of your screen on Spencer's foot. That's painful. And just looking at that. Did walk off under his own power, which is a good sign. But you can see there's still a, a bit of a limp. He's back on the floor and still limping. So Patterson with the four fouls. Now he's going to come out of the ball game. He was going to try and stay in, but he's going to be replaced by Dwayne Cox. I think that might have been one of those situations, Lance, where the player was trying to dictate <laughs> what happened, that he was going to stay in the game, but the coach thought better of it. Khalil Spencer with a couple of free throws. And how about this? I mean, in the second half, you're 3-4-11. Jackson State is essentially 3-4-11 from the free throw line. That is essentially the game. Yeah. Because contrarily in the second half, Prairie View is 10 for 11 from the free throw line. Spencer misses both. And it's still a 10 point lead. And James trying to get the steal there, but it will stay with Prairie View. Well, it'll stay with Prairie View in the form of free throws. Oh, Jackson State losing that battle oh, right this now. Is James called for his third foul. And Williams try and salt this one away for Prairie View. This is our next Super Tuesday doubleheader on ESPN and the ESPN app for Dew, Wisconsin in the Big Ten battle. That's 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Then it's the number 12 Wildcats against number 25 LSU and Baton Rouge. Big matchup between two of the top teams in the SEC. It's at 9 Eastern. 
Both free throws missed by Williams, and then the rebound, and then gets a little physical. As Prairie View got the offensive rebound, Dwayne Cox and Roland Griffin getting into it a little bit. And the arrow will give it to Jackson State. Well, that was about principles in terms of what you're supposed to do at that free throw line. You got to pinch down on the other rebounder. Roland Griffin called for the travel. I'm running short for Jackson State. Down by 10 with 341 to play. Almost a steal on the inbound as James trying to get that one away from Williams. Prairie View able to break the backcourt pressure. Lister, open three for Ellis. He couldn't miss in the first half. Back the other way, Martin, he gets fouled on his way, or Griffin rather, getting fouled on his way to the basket. It appears to be some conversation after that foul, but it appears cooler heads will prevail. Yeah, things getting a little chippy up out there. Griffin not happy with how hard he thought the foul was. Fade Williams called for that foul, and that's five on him. So Williams out of the ball game. As we're still waiting for Williams to come out, and he will now. Leon Sneed will return. Williams had a nice game tonight. Finding people at the right time, scoring at the right time. I thought he was one of the keys to this lead by Prairie View. One more coming up for Griffin. He scored in double figures in 15 of the 17 games he's played, now with 11. As many mistakes as Jackson State has made tonight, they literally are still in this game, only down eight. Putting on some backcourt pressure. Lister will slow things down here. Prairie View has to be careful not to force themselves to go into a deep shooting slump, or scoring slump, I should say, by freezing themselves out and, and essentially ceasing any momentum. Khalil Spencer call for that foul on Lister. Antoine Lister, 6'3", senior from Brenham, Texas, at the line for a couple. Curry View's done a nice job at the free throw line tonight. 14 of 18 after that make. And one more coming up for Lister. We started 10 of the last 11 games for Byron Smith's club. 11 points for Lister. He has scored eight of those in the second half. And it's back to a 10-point lead for a Prairie View. Under three to play. Trying to get the ball inside. Looked like that might have been a kick as James was trying to get it inside. Andrews looked like it hit off his foot, but no call by the officials. It will stay with Jackson State. Well, from my eyes, there's no question it was a, a kick. And when things are going your way, they're just going your way. And Jackson State does keep possession here. James trying to work his way inside. Now to Spencer off the glass. No good. The tip is no good for McKinnis. And then the rebound's pulled down by Prairie View. Almost a steal and out of bounds off of Vinji Wallace being aggressive. Boy, and how about McKinnis, the way he attacked that offensive board? It's really, that expression about sums it up. I mean, look at this guy. I mean, head on the rim. Ten-point lead for Prairie View. It's Prairie View can run some clock here. Six to shoot. Lister gets his pocket picked. Back the other way. 
James inside to McKinnis, and he'll have a free throw coming as well. You got to love this guy. All he has to do around the basket is jump. Defense doesn't get set outside of the semi. Oh, maybe he does. Well, Defense was set outside of the semicircle. Well, it's five on Lister, so his night comes to an end. Antoine Lister, second Panther to foul out of this game. Dwayne Cox will return. One of the keys for Prairie View is they've been able to manage the foul trouble they've had. Losing their second perimeter player. Devontae Patterson with four fouls. Currently on the bench, hurt his leg earlier in the half. As the second free throw is good for McKinnis. He's got 11. And it's a seven-point game. Under two to play. Andrews to the basket. Nice play by Andrews. And he's got 19. Well, that's how you deal with pressure. You attack it. McKinnis attacking the hoop there, and he's got two free throws coming up. Well, anytime you get guys trapping, no one in front of you, you do just that. Attack the basket. Put the defense on its heels. Fourth foul on Dwayne Cox of Prairie View. Another free throw coming for McKinnis. I just love this kid here, McKinnis. His ability to rebound and not the greatest of scores, but he really can impact the game because of how hard he plays and how he attacks the glass. Prairie View gets it across midcourt and now can burn some clock with the eight-point lead, about a minute and a half remaining. Cox to the basket, and he's got free throws coming up. Benji Wallace contesting there. I think you have to like the way Lance Prairie View has played this down the stretch. Sometimes you see teams in these situations get a little too passive offensively trying to melt the clock. We haven't seen that from Prairie View here. Yeah, especially of late. They have certainly been aggressive. And right now, Jackson State's doing exactly what they should be doing in terms of trapping Prairie View all over the court. One more coming up for Cox. He's gotten all four of his points from the free throw line, and that matches his season high. Jackson State needs points and in a hurry. Pass deflected out of bounds by Darius Williams, who will stay with the Tigers with a minute 20 remaining. Jackson State will go back and regardless of the outcome of this game, they'll go look and see a ton of missed opportunities. Foul called on Prairie View. Both teams have a double bonus. Yeah, that's exactly right, Lance. I think you look at, especially with the way the first half ended and the way the second half started for Jackson State, Certainly when they've played their best basketball in this game. Well, I thought one of the key turning points was Griffin getting the technical. And he got a little outside of himself emotionally. And I thought that contributed to the shift in terms of Preview being able to extend and take control of the game. I mean, it's a fine ball player. If he can grab those emotions and channel them, it'll bode well for this Jackson State Ball Club as they get ready for conference play, co conference tournament play. Jackson State trying to extend the game here. Committing the foul on Darius Williams. And the, the other contributor was shooting from beyond the arc. And Jackson State one for 15 compared to Eight for 19 for Prairie View. When you think about what Chancellor Ellis was able to do in the 
first half in that regard. Hit five three-pointers, really gave Prairie View a lift early in this game. Sixty-six, fifty-seven. Panthers on top, and the jumper is knocked in by Antelius Ross, his first field goal. A minute remaining. Three possession ball game. And as Prairie View will milk the clock here. Almost a turnover. Cox trying to get it inside to Henry. Henry can't handle it. Hey, Robert, there's some basketball left. <laughs> there is some basketball left. Absolutely. Jackson State now with a chance to get it back to within two possessions here. 45 seconds remaining. Well, you, you're going to need a three to get back in it. You've got plenty of time. James unable to connect as, again, the three-pointers have not been forthcoming for Jackson State tonight. Missed 15 of the 16 that they've taken. And the foul is given. Prairie View will shoot free throws. And at this point, Wayne Brent has to hope for some misses at the line. And some quick buckets from the Tigers. Well, and you got to appreciate Coach Brent's poise. I mean, you don't see a lot of college coaches sit down nowadays. It, they play every play, and I'm not suggesting that Coach Brent doesn't, but he just is very poised, calm, professor-like with the bow tie. Fits right in on a college campus. Yes, he does. Won four state titles in six years at Callaway High School in Jackson, Mississippi, before taking over at Jackson State. And, oh, that's not what Prairie View wanted to do, fouling the three-point shooter. As Williams has something to say about it. But for three free throws coming up here for Dontelius Ross, who's a 69% free throw shooter. And you talk about the missed opportunities for Jackson State. The free throw line has been the land of missed opportunities for the Tigers tonight. They have really struggled to connect on those. Yeah, and that's not a place where they get a lot done anyway. And I thought they might have vacated opportunities around the rim. Third free throw was missed. And Ross hitting the ground hard trying to rebound his own miss. And I think that might have been a, a lane violation that was called there on Ross trying to Get that basketball. And a really aggressive foul there. Committed by Jackson State. Javius McKinnis with the forearm shove. That's four fouls on him. Now you're trying to give a foul here, but maybe not quite like that. Yeah, that they call that a flagrant. Um, I don't think any video review is needed. It's got to be a little frustration there, too. Yeah, yeah. We saw as the game got late here, guys got a little chippy. So Cox makes it an eight point game with that first one. That's a new season high for Cox, now looking for his sixth point. He's able to make it a perfect trip at the line. Seventeen seconds remaining. As Prairie View will just hold on to the basketball. Does it look like Jackson State is going to foul? As the Panthers will make it 24 consecutive victories here at the Baby Dome. William Nick Center. Prairie View, Texas, as the Panthers have maintained their stranglehold on first place in the SWAC. They improve to 10 and 2 in the conference, 14 and 11 overall, while Jackson State suffers the defeat to fall to 7 and 6 in the league and 10 and 16 overall.
Prairie View with the victory. Jackson State certainly made it interesting, getting it to within a point early in the second half. But the Panthers able to prevail. Once again, as there was a, there's a skirmish happening right now, Khalil Spencer going after someone on Prairie View. Just after the game ended, it started on the far baseline. As now the assistant coaches trying to corral their players, still some pushing and shoving going on. It did get chippy late in this ball game. See some police officers and some security out on the court to try and calm things down. As the Prairie View players now headed to their bench. And the Jackson State players, or Prairie View rather, headed to the locker room. Jackson State still out on the court. Well, yeah, this is very disappointing and embarrassing really to both schools. It, it was a galleon effort by both teams and I saw that hands were being shaked and then all of a sudden Looks like someone said something maybe and Dontelius Ross wow. took exception. Wow. Certainly uh, a, a disappointing way to, to end just a, a good game in the SWAT. As we get another look at it here, see the coach is immediately trying to get in to defuse the situation. And Ross being corralled by his teammates, and then an assistant coach getting involved as well to try and defuse the situation. And then Khalil Spencer going after, I believe that was Tamir Bynum that he was trying to get after. And that obviously will draw the interest of the SWAC League office as there could be some suspensions forthcoming. Yeah, and I, I thought the police and the coaches did an absolute the exceptional job of grabbing all of the young men, refraining them and, and holding them back. And a lot of the Jackson State players are still over by their bench. The Prairie View players have gone back to their locker room. A few just came out to, to get a few things, and they're now headed back to their locker room as well as the police are still trying to keep Jackson State over by their bench to just keep the two teams apart here. As an ugly finish to what was a very competitive basketball game. 52 combined fouls in this ball game. Started to get a bit too physical in the latter stages. Perry View was starting to to pull away in this. And the Panthers pick up the nine-point victory. Jackson State staying on their bench for the time being. As that'll do it from Prairie View, Texas. Panthers picking up the nine-point lead over Jackson, the nine-point win over Jackson State.